Okay, so welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we have a um, very special guest. We're joined by Sean, who is a co-founder of Cornerstone Global Partners, obviously a big part of our business. Um, you know, he has got a fantastic journey, I think, in recruitment. So we're gonna to talk to Sean today about his own journey. We're gonna get some insights into what makes a good leader, what makes a good recruiter, and maybe talk a bit about how recruitment differs in, in different parts of the world. So hopefully you'll enjoy listening to us have a conversation while we eat some fantastic food. food. Again, at Two Rooms again, I think we, we live here pretty much, I guess. Yeah, thank you to our friends at Two Rooms for hosting us again, and um, hopefully you're gonna enjoy the video. All right, let's start then, shall we, guys? Let's go, let's, uh, let's tuck in. All right, I'm gonna put a bit of uh, lasagna. These are my favorite, this is my favorite dish that they, uh, they have, so I hope you uh, enjoy it. Crab cake, yeah? You yeah, yeah, it? yeah. So Sean, why don't you kick us off then, because I think our viewers are gonna be interested. You've got a, you know, a lot of experience in, in the recruitment world, so why don't you just maybe introduce a bit about your own background and... What's your role right now within the company, right? Sure. So right now, I am playing the role of the Managing Director for Cornerstone in the Asia Pacific. Wow, yeah. Uh, Asia Pacific is really countries like Hong Kong, we are, we are now in Singapore, we in Malaysia, in Thailand. Latest edition is Vietnam. So we are looking at other countries like India and Indonesia in the future. Yeah, growing fast, right? It's growing yes. so fast. Yeah. The company have at least tripled in terms of business size during the COVID period, which, Amazing. Yeah. which we are very proud and happy for the, the company. Mm. So a, a little bit about myself, I Cornerstone really started in, in Shanghai. That's about in 2012. Myself and Chris Walkin, the CEO of the company, we started the business in China. And uh, fast forward seven years later, I moved back to Singapore and yeah. started the uh, Asia, Asia journey outside of China. Mm. Well, I was really interested because exactly that. The last time you came to the business, you know, there was, like you say, it was right at the start, there was three or four people. A cubicle. A cubicle. Yeah, it was a very small room. Games and Medi. Yeah, Games and Medi were there. And then it was interesting when you, you, when you walked in the office this morning, just to see your reaction about the, the scale of the business. Wow. It's totally different, right? So what, wow. what was your first reaction of the office when you, when you came this morning? So, uh, I, I cannot imagine Matt, you were telling me my dream and vision for Cornerstone Japan to be 100, 100 staff. Yeah. You've, you guys have grown it to 60 staff, 70 staff now. Yeah. In the span of the last three years, yeah. profitable and, um, and having the best people in the industry joining us, I, I, I give it to you guys. Thank you, man. Your yeah. dream and your vision is coming true. It is. Yeah, I think 100 is the, is the first step. I mean, we, we actually, we've got bigger dreams than that. I think we want to be... Really? Oh, yeah, big time. <laughs> you know you know us, we want to be uh, a real major player in this market in terms of headcount. So that for us is over 200 people. And I think um, this market's ready for it. Yeah, I think so. So we're back again. Uh, main course time. Looks good, right, guys? As, as always, looks delicious. Um, I think, you know what, I think um, we all kind of share something in that we all kind of started in a very hardcore recruitment company. environment. And I think that is, um, you know, it is a little bit old school to say, but it gives you the foundation to, to really succeed in recruitment, doesn't it? When you... Yeah, I, I find recruitment, um, you know, the job of a consultant, mm. I always look at myself as a doctor to my client. Yeah. Um, I solve their human resource issue. Yeah. And um, I select my client to work with. Yep. Whoever I work with, I want them to be successful yep. and I find them the best people who will help them grow the business. Now, when I have that belief, any client will want to work with you. Yeah. And, and my time is limited, right? So, yep. so that's, that to me is, is the crux of recruitment. You look at yourself as a physician. Yeah, you diagnose the problem. Yes. You know, sometimes you have to deliver some bad news, <laughs> yeah. right? Directly. And I, I really agree with that. I think. Um, a lot of the, the very best consultants, they're not afraid to tell their clients where they need to improve. Yeah, some difficult, you know, truth sometimes you have yeah, to share yeah. with your clients. And Sean, you, you know, you work in different markets, right? You know, you, you are now covering a very wide area. 
What do you, do you think there are actually differences between, I don't know, a recruiter in Shanghai and a recruiter in, I don't know, Japan or Singapore? Do you see, do you see any difference, any personality traits that are different or a good recruiter will be a good recruiter everywhere? Yep, good question. Um, the traits of a very good consultant are all the same. There you go. You can see from the spark, their salesiness, they are, they are one of making money. We look for the same type of uh, aggressiveness, salesiness, extrovert, yeah. people who want to work hard, who want to make a lot of money. Yeah. This, these are people who usually will become very successful Definitely. In any industry. Um, what about from a management perspective? You know, there are lots of recruiters that, you know, maybe now they are in, you know, the third year, they're doing really well, they start to make a little bit of money. <clears throat> and they're at that point in their career that they're thinking, hey, actually, I want to take more responsibility. I want to get into management. What advice would you give to these kind of recruiters? Um, get your groundwork in recruitment methodology yeah. um, right first. Uh, if you can do a good job for your client, you will know how to replicate that to your team below you yeah. and that culture to, to them. Because once you believe in you trying to solve your client's problem, you are trained as a doctor, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can train more doctors under you I to, agree. to help your clients. So do you think that the best recruiters always make good managers, like the top billers always make good managers? Or what do you think about this? Kind of controversial topic. Yeah, yeah, this is a good question. Uh, no, not all big dealers will be good managers yeah. because of their personality and also what they want in life. The why of what why they are doing this is uh, is very important. I have very big dealers who are you know a million dollar biller, uh, but they are not good managers. But they they like to build, and they come to a point of time when they realize that hey, billing actually takes no. Have, building a team takes more energy for them it's and they make less money. It's sometimes it's easier to build than actually managing a team, right? So they, they will continue to build um, those jobs that are, you know, um, head of investment, yeah. uh, get a billing fee of two, three hundred thousand per, per deal. They'll close those positions then uh, hire a big team to train them to do those jobs. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, just in my experience, there are always exceptions, right? But. Actually, all the top leaders I, I know in recruitment have all, been, have all been good billers and good recruiters back in the day, right? Um, Same here, I had, I had actually much less success with average billers becoming managers and yeah. I had a lot of problems down the line in, you know, having really high standards in managing the team and uh, also giving like really technical advice. Uh, I think if you want to be running a really high performance, uh, uh, I think team most of the time, you need to be technically sound, as I said, you know, very, very solid methodology, technically sound, or also to get the respect, I think, from, from your team. Yeah, yeah. You know? But the life of a big biller means you are always working with your client, uh, working with your candidates, interviewing them, arranging interview timings for everyone, understanding the market of your client. Yep. It's, it's, it's your time, it's, it's like you're working for the McKinsey and World and the Bain and Company, where you're trading your time for money. Yeah. Um, and your time becomes very valuable the better, the better you get. So we're thinking about, um, me and Alex talking a lot about leadership in particular. And, um, you know, just the, the, the older we get and the more experience we get, it, it is so crucial to have the right leaders in a business. A, a, a good leader can do anything for you, right? They can transform an average team team into a successful into team. a successful team right especially if you like your sort of kind of business is, is a very fast growing business like ours you can only grow it if you are an excellent <clears throat> management team i think yeah and we see with our competitors you know maybe a competitor changes managing director and you think okay he or she is really good now now we're in a bit of trouble not trouble but now you're worried about them a little bit because you know the leader is going to make it happen yeah whereas if someone average takes over you you're like, okay, guaranteed that business is going is going down. Yep. So from you know, you manage a lot of people, had a lot of leadership experience. Our viewers are definitely interested in your opinion on you know a couple of a couple of takeaways about what makes a good leader. So what do you what do you think? Um, good leaders know how to plan and grow a business that's even bigger. They are good leaders who maintain their business size 
for five years, ten years, they're still called good leaders. Yep. My definition of good leaders is how do you grow 20, 30 percent year on year and continue to grow for the next five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That vision to first you must have the one to grow and then the vision of how to grow. That to me is the good leadership. That's interesting. Yeah. And 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 the secret to that is hiring the right people. <laughs> right? That, that's it. And it keeping is. them. And, and keeping, keeping them. them. Yeah, yeah. And keeping retaining them. Yeah. yeah. So at Cornerstone, I believe we have a very good uh, retention policy and, and commission plan. So I, I think that's that's one side. But I mean, it, it, to my clients as well, um, the CEO success is dependent on who his team is, the team that he has. Of course. I remember we have a very successful uh, vice president in China. Mm. He started with us as a consultant or senior consultant about eight, nine years ago. Right. I remember he did not have any billings in his first year. But because we, the leadership, we feel that he has put in the effort, he has the right attitude, he has the right actions, and he has all the right KPIs, you know, he have done his uh, calls. Yeah. So we know that he will make money for himself Eventually, one day. Yeah. And he turned out to, after a few years to be the top dealer in China. But sometimes, you know, you have to be a little bit patient, I think, with people. And maybe that's something I actually think maybe we learn over, yes. over the years, right? To patient know. with the right people. With the right, right people. people. So yeah, just yeah. not that, that, that guy is the right guy. Yeah. yeah. But also as good leaders, you need to know how to take quick actions on yeah, yeah. the wrong guy, right? So. Yeah. Very true. Fundamental, yeah. So why don't you um, maybe tell our viewers a little bit about yourself from a personal perspective, Sean? You got any hobbies, interests? Tell us about your personal life a little bit. I think they'd like to know, right? So when I, um, I left China in 2019 to yeah. go back to Singapore. So um, the, for the last three years in COVID, <laughs> three years, <laughs> no travels. So I, I do a lot of golf now. Are you, you got a handicap? Yeah. Yes, I got a handicap. What's your not, handicap? Not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I shall not say. <laughs> handicap is the clubs. Yeah. Um, and I, I also play a lot of uh, social badminton with okay. a, a group of friends in my, my NUS alumni club. Right. So I, I do that about three to four times a week Fantastic. during the lockdown period. So now traveling restarted. So I, whenever I'm in Singapore on the weekend, I, I will definitely play badminton. Um, Climb the Bukit Timah Hill in Singapore, if you know where that is. I don't. It's uh, it's the highest hill in Singapore. Okay. I think it's about 250 meter tall. Right. <laughs> it's you, very you run up it, like Rocky <laughs> Rocky style. Yeah, go up there. <laughs> um, yeah, just just walking, your heart rate will go to 120 right. per minute. Uh, that's good enough for me. Yeah. So yeah, this this is my free time. I have four kids, so I spend a lot of time with my yeah, yeah, family. Keep kids. you busy, right? Yeah. yeah. So so they keep me busy on the weekend as well. Lots of things to do in Singapore. Nice. Lots of things. Nice. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this episode. You got a few really good tips from Sean. Um, you know, this is um, the second episode in, in this series of special guests that we have. Hopefully you're kind of enjoying this series. I think the, the Dante episode previously with the hot wings was, was pretty special. It was spicy. It was, it was very spicy. spicy. Very that, spicy. Ghost, that ghost pepper is, is a killer. Um, and we've got one more, one more episode coming up, another kind of special guest. We're not going to reveal his name just yet, but this guy is, you know, one of Japan's leading experts on diversity and inclusion. You'll have definitely seen him on Japanese TV. He appears on CNN, on the BBC. Um, I think it's going to be a really uh, interesting and lively debate. So uh, tune in, subscribe, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>